Well, we've all been guilty of ordering takeout instead of reheating last night's leftovers. But those habits are having a huge negative impact on our environment. According to a new UN report on food waste, some 17% of the food produced globally each year is wasted. That amounts to nearly a billion tons of food that goes straight to the landfill. And turns out Canadians are particularly bad offenders. The average Canadian wasting 79 kilograms of food per year in their own homes. That's more than the average American who wastes 59 kilograms each year and more than the average person in the UK who throws out 77 kilograms of food. And while food is sometimes wasted in the developing world for reasons like lack of refrigeration, here in the West, it's largely a story of excess, buying in bulk, buying too much, or getting takeout instead of making stir fry out of whatever's in the fridge. So what more can you be doing to reduce food waste? Kate Perizzo is a professor at the University of Guelph who specializes in waste management. She joins us tonight from Guelph, Ontario. Thanks so much for being with us. Hi, Janella. So maybe let me ask you what was most, or, or I'll start by saying what was most surprising to me about this report was that the majority of food waste wasn't happening at grocery stores or restaurants uh, that were like tossing produce before their best before date. 61% of it is coming from households. What do you make of that? So there are lots of different ways to measure food waste, but all of the metrics tell us that consumers are a really big part of the problem. Mm. And it's not too surprising because we know that consumers are facing a lot of different challenges. We tend to be time poor. We tend to be reaching for convenience options. Mm. And then even when we're choosing our foods, we're balancing multiple concerns. We're thinking about nutrition, we're thinking about budget. And so preventing food waste can often slip through the cracks. Yeah, and I was also surprised to find that Canadians are particularly bad offenders, worse than Americans or Brits. Do we have any insight as to why that might be? Well, we know that we have a strong consumption culture here, which is really similar to in the U.S. and in the U.K. I also think that because we live in such a big and resource intensive country, we tend not to worry about our waste and we tend not to worry about where we're going to put it. When mm -hmm. really this is something we should be much more concerned about. So we mentioned, you know, poorer countries might um, deal with, you know, food spoiling faster if, say, they don't have access to refrigeration. But here, uh, what do we understand as sort of the main reasons behind people's food waste? What's, what's contributing to that? Often what's happening is that people are confronted with an abundance in stores, and so they bring home a lot of food, and then life gets in the way. So perhaps mm. they're not able to cook, they go out and get a meal, the food that's in the fridge rots. There could also be some food literacy issues, so people not knowing what to do with an ingredient that looks a little bit wilty. They only have one way of cooking it, for example. Lack of planning is also a really big issue for many Canadians. Hmm, yeah, I, we were talking in the newsroom about, you know, I think we all have that one vegetable that always, or fruit that always goes bad before we finish it. <laughs> Mine is zucchinis. I always buy them thinking I'm going to make something and I never get to it. Um, can you help mm -hmm. us maybe with some tips? You talked about meal planning. things. Can you help us with some tips about how we can reduce household waste, uh, household food waste in our homes? I know for me, one of the difficult things was when I lived alone. When I was single and I lived alone, I had a hard time because I didn't want to go grocery shopping that often, so I would buy more, but I wouldn't get to it before it spoiled. Can you help us with some tips or advice? Mm -hmm. So I think the first thing is that we all need to be a little bit more aware. We need to be a bit more conscious about the food that we're bringing into our homes and then how we use it. And so things like this UN report can really help us to be more thoughtful. There are a bunch of behaviors we can engage in, and when we're more aware, we can go to the internet, we can look up things like the National Zero Waste Council. There are lots of resources out there for recipes and different ways to store food. So those zucchini that are about to go bad, what can you do to freeze them well so you can use them later? But we also need to acknowledge that some of this is structural. Some of it is cultural. So for example, people who live alone go to the grocery store and they end up buying more bread than they wanted to. They mm -hmm. end up buying more strawberries than they wanted to because the container is too big. So then that waste shows up in households. So that's another reason why we're seeing so much waste at the household scale. Can you talk a little bit also about best before dates and how that impacts waste? Mm -hmm. So often people interpret best before dates as an expiry date, and that's not true in Canada. They are an indicator from the food manufacturers of how long the food will be at its top quality. And often at the best before date, food is still in excellent condition. 
So we need to learn how to engage with our food and tell whether or not it's gone bad by something other than the best before date. Mm. So smelling it, learning the signs that tell us when you look at food that it's not good and knowing which foods are the ones that we need to be most careful with. So for example, things like deli meats and soft cheeses, you might want to be really careful about. But if you buy a package of, say, cereal and the best before date is gone and the, the package hasn't even been opened, you're probably going to be fine to use it. Mm, okay. And so, you know, we kind of feel maybe that individual guilt when we throw things out from, from the fridge that have gone bad. Um, but obviously it adds up. What is the larger impact of food that continues to be wasted at this rate? Mm -hmm. It's been estimated that food waste accounts for somewhere in the range of 10% of all greenhouse gas emissions. So that includes food that is rotting in a landfill that's giving off, green, off greenhouse gases, but it's also all of the wasted emissions that happen in the production of that food that never gets eaten. And that's true for all the other inputs too. All the water that goes into growing that food that's not eaten, the land that's used, all the fossil fuels, all of the pesticides, all of the fertilizers, they are all wasted if we don't eat the food that is used to grow them. It's a pretty big environmental impact. You talked about some of the institutional things that kind of, uh, you know, influence food waste, packaging maybe. Uh, what would you like to see in terms of regulation from governments, uh, even when it comes to the rules about throwing out food? Some, some grocery stores don't give away food, say, to Second Harvest because of liability or rules. What would you like to see from an institutional level to help us cut back on food waste? So I do think that we need to revisit best before dates. I think that's something that is a policy level issue. I also think that I'd like to see some leadership around changing cultural and societal behaviors. So I'm based in Guelph and there's a pretty amazing initiative here led by the city of Guelph and Wellington County, which is called Our Food Future. And it's the local governments working with multiple stakeholders in order to build a circular economy for food. Mm. So they're trying to build a community where we waste less, where we support food businesses, and also hopefully address food insecurity along the way. And so that's some real policy leadership, I think. All right, Kate Parizo is a professor at the University of Guelph and she specializes in waste management. Thanks so much for taking the time. Thank you.